Good evening, everyone. Glad that you could join us tonight. I was just trying to get things set up here. We're, I'm uh, broadcasting here from home tonight. Uh, and uh, so anyway, as uh, I posted here for our regular attenders and our members and those uh, who check our pages that uh, there won't be any in-person tonight. And also just the way as by way of announcement um, uh, tonight, just to remind everybody uh, we're having a special Sunday uh, on this coming Sunday, the 29th. And uh, for those, of course, who live more locally and are regular tenders and members, uh, we are uh, having a special family vacation Bible school. It's for it's for all for from adults right down to children. Looking forward to it. We I think now we have I think slightly over 50. Uh, I think there's about 51 or so uh, registered. So praise the Lord for that. We're looking forward to that on Sunday. So no, there won't be any online service. So again, just keep that in mind. Uh, and we'll resume next Wednesday and the following Sunday and so forth as we normally have. And uh, so anyway, so we'll listen, we'll get into the Bible study tonight. Uh, we've been doing, um, uh, working on, uh, the great commandment. And uh, so what we'll do tonight is we'll read the passage in Mark chapter 12, and you'll see in verse 28, and I believe I have that on the screen for you about that. And one of the scribes came, and uh, having heard them reasoning together, perceiving, answered them, asked, which is the first commandment of all? And uh, Jesus answered him and said, uh, hear, O Israel, our, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is, is like, namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Um, I'll scroll up here, verse 32, And the scribe said unto him, Master, Thou uh, hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength, to love his neighbor as himself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw, he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man after that durst ask him any question. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this night. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we're able to still get the word out. Thank you for the opportunities you've given us. So, Father, we pray that you would touch the hearts and lives of those watching right now and will be watching this broadcast, Lord. We pray especially for those who are lost. Lord God, even as you just said here to this man, Lord God, that he wasn't far, but, he, but the reality is he still was not saved. So, Father, we pray, folks, would make that, that last, that great decision, Lord God, uh, to come to know you, to believe on you, Lord. So again, touch hearts and lives. Now bless our study tonight, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the uh, verse that I want to focus on, if you've been with us, is this verse right here. And um, loving the Lord your God with all your heart. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. As a matter of fact, I believe this is lesson number six, lesson part number six, I guess, in covering this passage here. Uh, with all thy heart with all thy soul, with all thy mind. We covered that last week. And today we're going to look at with all thy strength. So, and uh, so anyway, let's, uh, let me look at our, our, the lesson here and we'll look at some things and talk about same, some things concerning what God meant here. And of course, loving God, loving God. Um, if you've been with us in our study on Sunday mornings, we're talking about stress we're talking about um, some basic truths in relation to that. This, I, I usually preface each message with a couple of things like I did on Sunday about, you know, you've got to lay the ax to the root of the trees in order to, you know, deal with them um, and talking about symptoms. But I, I, I've been referring to this passage in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, and it really goes along with the passage tonight. Uh, in the Gospel of Mark. And uh, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, let's see if I can get that one up for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. <clears throat> and the Bible says there, if you could see at the top of the screen on your left there, and the very God of peace sanctify you. What does that say there? 
wholly. That means all of you. Doesn't that sound like what Jesus just said? Uh, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And now he says, with all your strength, with all thy strength. So what God wants is, um, he wants you uh, in, in, your, in a holistic way, I guess you can kind of say. How about that? Someone once said, holistic holiness. How about that? Amen. We talk about holistic living and so forth in the sense of, you know, um, yeah, it's a whole thing. Amen. So the Bible says your spirit, God always mentions, it, of course, as I mentioned before in our Sunday morning series, God mentions the spirit first, then the soul, and then the body. And we usually reverse those. We usually put the body first. And uh, so God starts, of course, with the other passage that we had uh, in our Mark 12, that um, it's with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. So the greatest command that God has for us tonight is to love him with everything, everything in our total, our whole being. Um, that's the greatest commandment. That's the greatest, that's the first and the greatest commandment. And uh, so uh, what's important tonight is to understand this. And and what's important also, so important uh, in our world tonight, and I, I think uh, this is a constant challenge, a constant challenge for us as believers to realize that um, it's, it's one thing to know these truths tonight. You know, it's easy, to, I, it's easy for me to sit here to broadcast this and preach it to you and teach it to you. It really is. It's, it's, to, for some people, this is just information. But I, I don't want it to be just head knowledge and information tonight. I want this to be a living reality in your life. The problem is we know a lot of truth, but that truth that's not been appropriated in your life, uh, you will not experience what God wants for you tonight. Amen. So it's important for us. So go to James chapter one. I'll see if I can get that on the screen for you here. James chapter one. James chapter 1, James chapter 1, and uh, James chapter 1, and let's see here, um, and in verse, let's see here, verse 22, I'll scroll down here, verse 22, here, verse 22 of James chapter 1. As you can see, this is a popular, it's a very familiar passage to everybody. The Bible says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. See how important it is. Again, we're hearers. Right now you're hearing. Amen. So that's good. I'm glad you're hearing. That's you're halfway there. Now the next thing to do is this. As God speaks to your heart about what is being taught, what is being preached uh, in your daily Bible reading, you need to do something about it. It's just not enough to know it. It's just not enough to hear it. That's great. If you know it, praise God. Um, as a matter of fact, that passage that I, I didn't, I didn't um, uh, jot it in my notes, the Bible, even Jesus said, and I'm trying to remember where it was in John's gospel, of course, I think John 13, 14, 15, I think it was chapter 15. Um, the Lord says, um, speaking of this process of, of not what you're, just because you know it, but also if you do it, he says, happy are ye, if you do these things, that's what God wants you to know. It's great if you know them, but it's important to do them. It's important. So he says in verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And that basically what the Lord's referring to is the mirror. The mirror, as we all do, many of us, hopefully most of us, we spend time, a little bit of time each day, maybe a few times a day in front of a mirror. We, uh, you know, we, we get ourselves ready for the new day. Um, you know, we, we, we wash our face or we take a shower. We, you know, we, we brush our hair, we brush our teeth, you know, whatever. We look at ourselves and, and we begin to see ourselves. And the Lord says that the Bible is, is, is similar. You know, the Lord uses as a, as a, as an illustration in his word that when we open the Bible, God begins to reveal to us, um, the real us through the scripture. That's why some people really have a challenge reading the Bible um, because the Holy Spirit's trying to work in their hearts and um, sometimes they don't like what God's trying to do. It's unfortunate. Even as I mentioned on Sunday, you know, they try to 
They think, oh, no, I'm not going to do this. No, you need to do this. You need to open the word. You need to be around Christian people. You should be in church. Amen. And uh, so he says, let's let's not be like the person. Um, he says that he says, you know, they're just a hearer. They're not a doer. He says, it's just like a person looking in the mirror and seeing that there's a problem. They see that something needs to be taken care of. But what happens is they're not they're not doing anything about it. They behold themselves, their face in a, in a glass. And then he says there in verse 24, I'll highlight it for you. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So the Bible says he sees the problem and he, and, and he just ignores it. That's not going to help anything. He ignores the problem. And, um, and so what he, he doesn't apply the truths. And straightway means immediately, immediately he forgets what manner of man he was. You know, what God revealed. It's so, so important to act upon what we know, not just know it, but to act upon that. Um, so it's important for that, that we need to follow those truths. Amen. So it must be lived out to be alive for Christianity to be alive. It must be lived out. This is, this is what really makes, um, your faith in Jesus Christ, a powerful force in this world. If you want this, this Christianity that we, we say we believe in, um, if, if we want that to be, how can I say it? Um, to be a, have an effective, uh, be effective in the lives of people. We need to live these truths out. Amen. So, and that's so important. Uh, so, so important. Now I, I just want to share one thing with you here. Um, some of you know a man named Eric Little. He was known as the, the Flying Scotsman. As a matter of fact, they even did a movie called The uh, Chariot of Fire, I think it's called. I'm trying to remember here. I got, the, I got a little bit of information here uh, about his life here. And uh, yeah, I think it was the movie called Chariots of Fire. It was done in 1981. It's not 100% accurate to the actual life of Eric Little. But let me give you a little bit of background about this man. You'll see, and again... I believe here is a man who chose to give God 100%. Um, you know, as many of you, if you know anything about the life of Eric Little, he, he became a famous uh, track star, um, you know, and, and he won medals in the Olympics in 1924. But let me give you a little bit of background. He's the son of missionaries. His parents were Christian missionaries in China. He was born in China in 1902. And uh, Eric Little was... Um, um, born there. And uh, so he grew up with his parents there for a while. And then he ended up in school. Um, he ended up uh, going to, let's see here at the age of six. Um, he went to a school in China till the age of five, age of six. He, he and his eight-year-old brother, Robert, were enrolled in Ethan College, uh, a boarding school in South of London. That was probably very common. And this was the, being the son of missionaries. And uh, their parents and their sister, uh, Jenny returned to China and so forth. But anyway, during his time in school, he became a very good athlete, very good athlete. And he, he won different awards. Um, by the time he was age of 15, uh, he, he, you know, he was well recognized. Um, then he ended up in the University of Edinburgh and little became known for being the fastest runner in Scotland. Uh, newspapers carried stories of his feats in the track meets and Many articles stated that uh, he was a potential Olympic winner. So anyway, um, so as a result of that, you know, uh, it, it's, what's also interesting is, but he had a faith in Jesus Christ. He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he had some, I don't know, he, some convictions uh, that he felt really strong about that many people today probably don't even think about or don't even, or not even a concern this day. Um, but he was a devout Christian. So he's just not famous for sports, but he is a famous Christian. And uh, so anyway, uh, he joined his brother in 1920 in the University of Edinburgh. Um, and he ended up uh, playing rugby in his university. And he ran the 100 yard and the 220. These are some things I remember back in the days, you know, we didn't do you know, 100 meter, 200, 400. It was the 100 yard and, and the 220 and the 440 and the 880 and so forth. Things have changed so much over the years. And uh, so anyway, became really good at rugby, was fast. 
And uh, so anyway, um, he ended up doing the 100-yard race, and he set a British record of 9.7 seconds, which nobody could even come close to in 23 years. And the 220 race, 21.6 seconds. And uh, so anyway, and he graduated with a Bachelor of Science. Can you imagine that? He went to university, didn't even lose his faith. Praise God for that. Uh, we, don't, we don't hear that all the time with young people who are Christians going off to secular university. So in 1924, the city of Paris was hosting the Olympics. And Eric knew this. And again, when you, when you, the movie says that he found out when he was crossing the English Channel and that uh, he decided when he found out when he was crossing the English Channel that they were going to hold the 100-meter uh, race or the 100-yard race um, on Sunday. But the actual account is this. Eric Little knew months ahead, and he already purposed in his heart, if any of these races take place on a Sunday, that he would not run those races, regardless. Doesn't matter if he lost a medal, would never win a medal, but he said, I refuse to, to run on Sunday. And of course, even back then, some people, they couldn't understand. They didn't, you know, they didn't, I mean, probably um, not as much as today. Today, people, a lot of people, doesn't matter to them at all. So what happened was, but he didn't give up. Now, you know, praise God. You know what? There's challenges for Christians in our world tonight. Lots of challenges. And Eric Little didn't give up. And what he did was there was someone uh, who folded a piece of paper. And he folded that paper uh, square. Uh, and, and anyway, uh, he passed it on to Eric Little. And on that paper, it said, in the old book, it says this. He that honors me, I will honor him. And he says, wishing the best of success always. And that was a reference to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Anyway, so he was moved. Eric was moved by this. And, um, and someone other than his coach believed in him and the stance he had taken. And so anyway, as time went on in this meet here, uh, he, he didn't run uh, the 100-meter race but what he did was uh, he, 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 he completed the 200-meter finals. And what happened was, um, and uh, which he received a, a bronze medal. Um, and uh, his performance in the 400-meter race um, that he won there, I mean, he did, let's see here. I'm looking at the, some of the stats here. Um, let's see here. The 400, uh, 440 was 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 a world record he did that so he couldn't run the 100 he did the 200 meters and the 440 and won medals in those and uh, so you know what um he said i'm going to put god first i'm going to put the lord first in my life amen and i i you know what you can serve god and still be involved in sports you can you can serve god and and still be a, have a good job you could be involved in sports and and accomplish many things in life, amen? But the thing is this, don't ever forget to put God first in your life, amen? Don't ever forget to do that. And I, I believe God honored that. You know, the Bible says we're supposed to love God with all of our strength, all of our strength. That's all of your abilities, your capabilities, your power, your might, your action, your energies. God says, give me your energy, give me your strength. Give me your might. Amen. Give it all to me. You know, and again, it reminds us that loving God is about actions. It's just not about people saying, well, you know, I intend to, you know, I, 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 I intend to do this for God or I intend to come to church or I intend to, I intend to give, I intend to pray or serve God. No, that that's wonderful. But that is, if you're not doing it, you're out of the will of God and you need to be in the will of God. And again, remember, uh, the Christian life is a life of loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. So God reminds us that your strength must be concentrated on loving God. That's what we need to do. So um, I quoted some of these verses in the last couple of messages. I need to quote them again. Uh, and I believe it's got to do with our message on Sunday morning with the stress. And we talked about guilt on Sunday morning. The previous Sunday morning, we talked about anger, people dealing with anger and how these things contribute to, to health issues. Uh, they may not be the, 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 the main causing fact or problem or concern in 
those health issues. There may be some pre-existing things, but a lot of times we can contribute some of these health problems by our, our emotions and cause stress in our life. But the, the thing is this, what God wants, he wants us, he says in Colossians 3.23, that whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. Let me get up Ecclesiastes 9.10. I like this one. Ecclesiastes 9.10. Let's see if I can get that up. Ecclesiastes 9.10. You see that on the screen there. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Do it with thy might. For there is no, no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. He says, do it now while you're alive. Give God the best you got while you're still living. Amen. That's what God, you know what? You're on your deathbed. Hopefully it's not a bunch of, well, I should have done this and I should have done that. I wish I would have done this. No, give God your best today. Amen. We can't change the past. You're alive. You're, you're living today. We can't change our past, but we can change today. We can do something right now. Are you going to do something right now? Amen. Let's not, let's not, let's not live in the past and the regrets of the past. Let's not worry about the future. Let's concern ourselves. What are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? And we need to do it. We need to obey God. Um, your strength, loving God with all your strength enables you to turn what's called intention, like you intend into action. So if, if there's love here, if you truly love God, it won't be just all talk as we just talked about in the James 1 passage. It will, be, um, it will be not just hearers, but doers of the word. Amen? Amen. And that's what God wants. That's what God wants. The Bible tells us, um, uh, we did a study here, I think it was just uh, 2019. We did a study, 2019 or 2018. It's not on YouTube. But I did a study on the armor of God. We even mentioned some of that in one of my recent messages. Ephesians 6.10, let's get that up. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Let's see if I can get that up here. Ephesians 6, 10. The Bible says, and I like this. I, I mention this a lot in my messages. You know, the Bible says, Paul keeps on saying, finally, it's like a pastor. My last point is, you know, get to the last point. Here he is, chapter 6 of Ephesians to that letter to those Christians at Ephesus. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. How about that? You know, a lot of people today who don't have God in their life are looking for strength. And they look to themselves. They look to other people. And people can help. We know that. But people will also fail you. Amen. We need to be strong in the Lord. Not in ourselves. Not in ourselves. And he says there, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. On above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and taking the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always uh, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hey, listen, God wants us to put on the whole armor. God wants all of your heart. He wants all of your soul. He wants all of your mind and he wants all of your strength. Amen. God says, Hey, listen now, I want all of you. Another passage. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12 and uh, Romans chapter 12, verse one, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, God says, it's only reasonable that you take your body, that you give me all of your uh, heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength. He wants all of you. He doesn't want you to say, well, I'll give you this part of my life, but these, these other areas I'm not. No, God 
deserves all of it. God deserves all of it, and he wants all of it. And he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I think it's verse 16 here. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the temple of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. God says you are God's temple. That body that God wants you to offer, as we, as we just read a few moments ago in Hebrews or Romans 12, 1, you're supposed to, uh, that's a sacrifice. Offer yourself as a sacrifice to God and say, God, I'm giving you my life, God. And you, actually, you're recognizing when you say that, that God already has had ownership in you since you've gotten saved. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's see if I can skip down there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll just have to scroll down here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay. Watch this here. The Bible says here, what? Here we go. Here was, uh, oh, here we go. What? Know ye that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God. Now watch this. I like this part. Ye are not your own. That's what God says. You're, if you're saved, you are not your own. You have no right to say, I'm going to do whatever I want with my life. If you're saved, you need to check in with God. You need to turn to God. You need to ask God. You need to look to the Lord. He says this, look at verse 20. He said this, for ye are bought with a price. God says, when I died and paid for your sins and you received the gift of eternal life, he says, I redeemed you. I've purchased, you've been purchased. How about that? He paid for your sins. And now he says, you're not your own. You're bought with a price right there. You're bought with a price. What is that price? Uh, first Peter chapter one, I think it is. I should look here before I go searching for it. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. And I think it's, yes, verse 18. So first Peter one, first Peter one. 18. So the Bible says, for as much, look at this here, for as much as ye know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from the vain conversation received from by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. God says, I paid for your sins. I paid for your sins. Amen. I redeemed you. You were purchased. He says, you know what? You weren't redeemed with corruptible things. You know what? It was through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross. Man, I'll tell you, praise God for that. Amen? Amen. So uh, the Lord says, hey, how about in 1 John 3, 18? You got to love God with all your strength. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. We'll go over there. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. And the Bible says, my little children... How about that? My little children, let us not love in word. See that? Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. Let's stop talking about what we're going to do for God. Let's do it. Amen? Neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. Let's get to it. Amen? It's Listen, I believe, listen, I, we're, we're not dating the return of Christ. We don't know the day or the hour, the times or seasons, but we're getting closer. We are closer today than we were yesterday. Each day we get that much closer to the return of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? We need to work extra hard. We need to give God exactly what he told us 2,000 years ago. Nothing's changed. The scriptures have not changed. They're still the same. And we need to just obey them and follow them. God says, I asked for this 2,000 years ago. From my people, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I think uh, he's waiting for some of God's people tonight to do that. Amen. Love God. It means to love him exceedingly richly. Amen. Praise God. We need to go all out. Matthew 5.41 tells us, you know, he says, if someone asks you to go a mile, 
give them twain. That means go the extra mile, double it. Amen. If they say, hey, walk a mile here. Amen. There's a lot of things. I'm not going to get into the teaching of that. Um, let's go the extra mile. Jesus Christ taught that 2,000 years ago. Are you going the extra mile tonight? I hope you are. How about Proverbs 24, 16? Proverbs 24, 16. Let's turn over there. Proverbs, Proverbs 24, 16. How about this? I love this. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. You know what? You're saved. You're a just person. The God says this, you'll fall. We all fall. We all fall. It was, I've never fallen. Man, you better look in the word. You see yourself the way God sees you. We have all fallen. Bible says, for all of sin, it comes short of the glory of God, every one of us. But he says this, when you do fall, here's what you need to do. You need to get back up. You need to get back up. That's what we need to do. Give it your best shot. You fall down, you pick yourself back up, and you keep on going forward. Amen. I love that passage in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. You know, when you talk about the races, I used to do track and field myself. That's why I have this affinity for people like Eric Little and Jim Ryan years ago. You got to look these people up. And when they used to run the mile and run the, these races, the 400 and the 100 and all these different things. And some of these people what they would do is they would put ankle weights and they would train and tone up their bodies running these things with these weights. Um, and, uh, you know, that's how they would prepare many times. And he says, you know what? When it's time to run the race, you know what you need to do? You need to get rid of those weights. Amen. You need to get rid of them. It's time to run the race. Amen. That's what you need to do. So there's some things that weigh us down. They may not be sins because he, he, he uses the word, wait here, and then look at the next phrase, and the sin. So we know this, that easily besets us. We know that the weight and the sin are two different things. Weights are not sins. There's just some things that kind of slow us down a little bit. And God says, you need to lay some things aside. Some things are slowing you down. But he says also the sin that doth easily beset us. In other words, we all have a besetting sin. We all have something that the devil seems to zero in on and knows our weak point. Amen. And uh, he keeps on going after that thing because he's successful each time. And we fall. Amen. We need to, it's like the armor. There's something open. One of those darts, you don't have the heel, shield of faith up. One of those darts hits you. Amen. Then he says this, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Man, I'll tell you, People are looking at the politicians right now. We're, we're in the midst of a, a election campaign for prime minister and for our M, uh, members of parliament and so forth. Um, you know what? I pray for them. Um, I'm going to cast my vote on September 20th, I think it is, uh, or 21st. I can't remember one of those dates there. Um, but you know what? My hope's not in them. My hope's in God. My hope's in the Lord. My hope's in God's word. It's not in some political leader. They're everyone will disappoint you. Amen. So I got to keep my eyes on Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. The Bible says, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you, thank the Lord here. And uh, so, so in this race here that we're running here, we need to realize this, that you know what? You do get knocked down. You do, you do have times where you slow down and so forth, but we need to keep on going forward. We need to keep on going forward here. So let me, let me wrap up with some things here for you, amen? So to fully love God with what we find, uh, to love him with what our whole being will involve some things. It will, revolve, it will involve, number one, our hands to do. It will involve our eyes to see. It will involve our ears to hear. And it will involve our feet to go. And it will involve our mouths to speak. You want to give God your whole strength, all your strength? Amen. That's your whole being. Okay. So, number one, to love him with what we find our hands to do. Amen. Listen, we're to serve the Lord diligently. 
we're supposed to be like the hands. The Bible even tells us in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, we're like, he, the imagery is like, we're like a human, you know, he takes like the human body imagery and he says every member of this body that are saved are in the church, amen, have a certain purpose and function. And uh, as a result of that, he says there that what, what, what we're supposed to do here is take our hands, take our hands and be the hands of God to other people. Reach out to other people. Amen? We love him by helping others. Can you be like the hands reaching out to reach out to help people? Amen? Our hands serve as a major purpose in loving God with all of our strength. So here we need to love God with all, not only with what we find our hands to do, but we're supposed to love them with our eyes and what they see. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? We just looked at that passage in Hebrews 12 too. We're supposed to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Are you looking unto Jesus? Are you looking unto Jesus? You know, I like this passage over in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Who are you looking at? What are you looking at? Like I said, people will disappoint you. They will disappoint you someday. Amen? Unfortunately. And some, some, people, some Christians have had their eyes on people that have been disappointed, whether it be people in the pulpit, the pastor in the pulpit, people in the pew. And of course, we ought to be a good testimony. We ought to be a good witness. Uh, we ought to not cause anybody to stumble. But the reality is we all will fall. We will all fall. We all fail the Lord. We all come short of that glory of God. So when that happens, you know what we need to do? Instead of looking at them and saying, now I'm going to give up on God, throw the Bible away and get out of church. We need to get, no, that's not the answer. That's not the proper response. The proper response is, listen, if you call yourself a Christian, you're going to look to God. You're going to, you're going to stay close to God and you're going to realize that people fall. And what are you going to, you know what you should do? You should go help that person, not attack that person. That's what you need to do. And so in Acts chapter 4, what we have here is that, that God's people, this is like the first persecution of the church, of the early church. So they were preaching the gospel. They got themselves for preaching the gospel, not for, not for preaching against the government, the Roman Empire. They were preaching the gospel, and they got themselves in trouble. And the, the Bible tells us here that when you, when you look at this, they were told that they should not preach. They were forbidden to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, that's a hated name today. I mean, man, I'll tell you, you can talk about any other person, but that name people hate. The world hates the name of Jesus Christ. So anyway, the Bible tells, um, they commanded them not to do it. And of course, when you study early church history, they were persecuted, they were beaten, they were incarcerated. They felt they experienced all those things. And they said this statement. They said, you know what? Um, in verse 20, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. What have you seen? As I've mentioned so many times in my preaching, you know what? Um, we look at things. That has an effect on what we talk about. I could tell you what people have seen and read, what they've seen and heard, news and social media, because you just look at what's being posted on social media. I know where they're how about posting the Bible and the scriptures? How about posting the gospel tonight? Amen. How about getting the word out? This is the time that people need the word. This is what they need. Instead of getting arguments with other Christians about the secular matter uh, things and the, and, the, and the political matters, you're wasting your time. That's not going to save a soul at all. What's going to save the souls of men tonight is people telling uh, others about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. That's what's going to matter. So we have, we're supposed to love them, uh, number one, with our hands, amen, by helping others. Be the hands of God to somebody tonight. Love them with our eyes, amen. Love them with your eyes tonight, amen. Praise God. Um, be careful what you're looking at. We sing that song to the kids. And I've said that, I think, last Sunday or the Sunday before. Now we're supposed to, number three here, is we should be loving him with ears to hear, ears to hear, with ears to hear. Jesus said in his earthly ministry many times, he said, he that hath ears, let him hear. And I want you to see something. Go to Revelation chapter 2, and I'll get that up here. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. 
I like these letters. I, I, they're so powerful. These two letters here um, that Paul or that John the Apostle, this is the revelation. Uh, it's, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it is. And uh, so anyway, in these letters, there's the statement that is constantly repeated. And you'll see them um, in these passages. When you look at it here, you'll see this. And so the first church is the church at Ephesus, verses 1 through 7. And so when you go down to verse 7, look what he says here. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Are you listening? What are you listening? Are you listening to God tonight? Who are you listening to? Then we go down to verse uh, 17 here. I'll scroll down. Verse 17. What else? Look at this. He that hath an ear, let him hear. He says it over and over again. That's the church at Smyrna, uh, or the church at Pergamos there. Verse 17. Oh, I forgot. Verse 11. I skipped verse 11. Scroll up here. Here's the church at uh, Smyrna. Look at this. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Do you think the Lord's trying to get a message across? You got an ear? Listen. Listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm telling you something. Amen? Listen, I'm giving you the word of God tonight. Are you listening? Are you listening to what's being said? Amen? Or are these words going to fall to the ground? The Bible says the prophet Samuel, he preached. He was a prophet, priest, and king, or a, and a judge. And the Bible says, you know what? None of his words ever fell to the ground. Unfortunately, there's many words that many a preacher have preached and taught that are falling to the ground because people aren't listening. They don't want to listen. They're not listening tonight. I hope that's not you. Look at this. And uh, verse, uh, verse uh, 29, verse 29. This is the church of Thyatira. Last verse there. Look at this. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Look at this. The next chapter, chapter 3. Look at verse, uh, uh, verse 6. Chapter 3, verse 6. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. Are you listening? Are you listening? You got ears? Are you listening? You know, I always wonder as a pastor, you look out and, you know, sometimes you don't think people are getting it. And sometimes they are. Even though when I stand behind that pulpit, and I look out and I look at people and I say, hmm. I wonder if they're getting anything out of this. Are they focused? Are they, their minds out there somewhere else? It's sad. It's sad. Can't keep our attention here these days. Look at verse um, 13 in chapter 3. Verse 13. I think you're getting the picture. He that hath an ear, let him hear. God says, let him hear. You know what? If God said, Jesus said this to each church, and he did. He did this to each church. Look at the last verse in the chapter about the church of Laodicea. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith. God's got a message. God wants us to listen to him. We need to spend time in the Word. We need to be under the preaching and teaching of God's Word. Are you listening tonight? The Holy Spirit speaks to you through these, through the preaching, through your personal Bible reading, through devotions, through Bible. You know, God speaks. Amen? God speaks. What is he saying? You know what he's saying? He's saying, listen to me. Be transformed. Be changed. Amen? Praise God. Listen, listen. That's what God wants for you tonight. Amen. Um, and you got to love. And by the way, listen to him and listen to others. Amen. Listen, listen, listen to them. Stop listening to gossip and slander and backbiting and, and negative uh, conversations, especially on social media and news. Media. It's going on constant, especially from Christians. You know, someone shared something here uh, uh, three or four days ago. I'm not even going to give a hint at what it was. And I was very disappointed because the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 19, 1 Timothy 5, 19, 1 Timothy 5, 19. We did a study in our uh, institute, our Bible institute there a couple of years ago with a couple of our men. And we, we came to this chapter and I labored this one a little bit when we went through this. And the Bible says this, against an elder, so we're speaking of a leader, a leader, a Christian leader, okay? A pastor, a bishop, an elder. Against an elder, receive not an accusation. So listen to me. If you hear something tonight about a pastor or about a Christian leader, you know what God says? You're not supposed to even receive that. You're not even supposed to receive that. But what are you supposed to do? Unless there's two or three witnesses that actually saw what happened take place. Well, I'll tell you, that verse is constantly being misobeyed or disobeyed in our world tonight through social media and news media. People are sharing stuff, and God says, you shouldn't even be receiving that stuff. Man, I'll tell you, 
You know, people need to watch what they're watching on social media. And it's a shame that even Christians are even doing that. What a shame. What a shame. Stop listening to that stuff. What are we supposed to listen to? Philippians 4, 8, find them, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if be any praise, think on these things. That's Philippians 4, 8. You know what? That kind of knocks out most of what's on Hollywood, the news media and social media and entertainment industry. You could probably find one of those things, truth, honesty, just, purity, things that are lovely, good report. When you're watching some, you start thinking about those things. Is it right? Is it pleasing to God? God knows our minds and he knows our hearts. Amen. So our hands, our eyes, our ears, our feet. Now watch this. Love them with your feet to go. You know what? This pandemic that we've been living in, it's, uh, it's really, it's really unfortunately has caused um, a lot of challenges and people have not been involved with the gospel as they should. And uh, so it's, it's a shame. It's a shame. And uh, so anyway, but we need to get our the word of God out. We need to get the, um, we need to get the gospel out. We need to speak the word of Christ, the words of Christ. Amen. Well, listen tonight, um, that's just a little lesson here. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you. And, um, and uh, so anyway, hopefully this has been a help to you. Let's pray. Father, again, thank you for this night. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth. Now help us tonight, Lord God. And we pray, dear God, that you would touch the hearts and lives of those who have heard this message. And just again, use us, Lord God. Use me, Father, to help people, and especially those who are lost, Lord God. Now, Father, we ask your blessings tonight. And uh, God, again, just uh, we, want, we want to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind and strength and we'll thank you and praise you in jesus name amen god bless you all lord willing we'll see you again